Okay, so polynomial long division. Um, where does this fit with what we've already learned? Well, we've already learned how to factor, and you factor things that have a higher degree than just x, x squared expressions, x cubed expressions. But what if you have really weirdo expressions and the factors don't follow the patterns that we learned? Remember that the patterns that we learned are just shortcuts. And they are actually shortcuts for polynomial long division. So what we're gonna to learn to do is use polynomial long division to factor things that don't fit the patterns, that aren't uh, an ABC problem or factor by grouping. So these are getting into the weirdo ones. But before I can teach you how to do polynomial long division, I find that oh, we need a little bit of vocabulary for long division. Uh, some of you tell me that you don't even remember long division. <laughs> Okay, so first thing is first, um, if you take 251 divided by three, that is the same thing as 251 over a three, which is the same thing as dividing a three out of 251. All three of those are equivalent expressions. The division format is used for process, not answers with the division symbol is used for process, not answers. Fraction form is the one that we use the most often. There are other forms, but you'll learn those in pre-calculus. You don't have to know the other ones this year. Uh, so if your trouble is a lot for a lot of people how to go from here to here, they, they can't remember which one goes inside, which one doesn't. This is kind of silly, but it's an easy way to remember. Let's say that you've got the fraction two thirds and you're supposed to do long division. So just imagine that a stiff breeze comes along and it knocks the fraction over. So the three's on the bottom, so it doesn't travel very far when it's knocked over. The bar sticks into the ground and two goes the furthest because it's on the top. There's your long division. So just think of it in terms of a fraction being knocked over and you'll always get it in the right order. Okay, so skip a line there. And we're actually going to do long division to remind you of the process. So we're gonna take 251 and divide a three out of it. So typically how you learned it was what times three is a number close to 25, but not bigger than 25. And if you remember grade school, you were like times two. And the teacher would be like, no, that's not close enough yet. Times three, you know, <laughs> you remember doing that? Two, three, four, five. Now you're like, eh, three times seven is 21. Uh, three times eight is 24. That's about as close as I'm gonna get. So then the eight goes over the five. Then you multiply eight times three and you get 24. And then for some mysterious reason, they never explain to you this negative appears out of nowhere. We'll talk about that later. And you subtract, 25 minus 24 is one. Bring down the next digit, that becomes an 11. Then you do it again. How many times does three go into 11? It goes in three times. Three times three is nine. Again, this mysterious negative appears. 11 minus nine is two. And that was typically as far as you got. And the one thing they do that I can't stand is they teach you to put an R next to the remainder. What the heck? That's not even math. Um, yeah, we don't do that. I wish they would just not teach that. It's dumb. Okay, so let's label the body parts. So the number on the outside is called your divisor. And in function form, lowercase d of x. That's your divisor. The part underneath of the division bar is called the function. And its abbreviation is F of X, lowercase. The 83, which is the largest part about your answer, 83 is called the quotient, which is lowercase Q of X in function form. And you know what two is. Two is indeed the remainder abbreviated lowercase r of x. Okay, when you divide polynomials, there's x's in them. So this is the formula for how you write your answer. You take a function f of x, you divide it by a divisor d of x. 
When you're done, you write the quotient, which is Q of X, plus you do a remainder fraction, which is R of X over D of X. This is your basic answer format, and this is what you're going to put all of your answers in on your homework. If there isn't a remainder, it's just going to be Q of X. So let's write the answer that we already got in this form. So it's the quotient, which is 83, plus the divisor, which was 3, sorry, the remainder, which was 2, over the divisor, which is 3. And that would be your answer in this format. Again, the first number is the quotient. And you call the entire fraction with the remainder and the divisor. That's just called the remainder fraction. And this is sometimes called um, polynomial fractional form. So that's basically the format. And I gave you the formula and the diagram so you can figure out what goes where on your homework if you draw a blank. Okay, Roman numeral two. What a turn. I'm skipping a whole section because these are kind of long. No. <laughs> yes, okay. Roman numeral two. Polynomial long division. Okay, and polynomial long division is used for a variety of things. In the case of what we're going to be doing with it, it's going to be used to identify factors. See if something is factorable. If something is not factorable, then you have a whole other approach to solving that we don't mess with this year. <laughs> um, if it's not factorable, you go into this whole other thing. Um, but this year, we just need to know, is the thing factorable or isn't it? Nice thing about polynomial long division also is it's if you forget your factor formulas and you want to decide does that x plus 3 actually factor out, you can use long division to do it. I do that when I do cubics because for like an a cubed plus b cubed thing, because for the life of me, I can't remember the formula. I just know that a plus b has to be a factor, so I long divide it out and I have my answer. So it can actually substitute in for your patterns because remember, your patterns are a shortcut to this. This is the non-shortcut. This is what those patterns represent. Okay, so we're going to start with an example. And uh, we're going to take x plus 3 as the divisor. And then we're going to divide it out of 2x squared minus 5x plus 6x minus 15. Now, to set this up for long division, you need to make sure that you simplify both the function and the divisor. And then you also need to make sure that they are in standard form order, which we learned how to do earlier, how to put something in standard form. So the x plus 3 is fine, but on the inside, I've got a couple of x's that need to be put together. Otherwise, the function on the inside is OK. So x plus 3, and then I'm going to Simplify, 2x squared plus x minus 15. This one has no gaps in it. It goes x squared, x, and the number. We'll do one with gaps later. We're just going to start with a simple one. Okay, here's where your thinking has to be different. When you do number long division, you ask how many times, I call it the gazintas, how, much, how many times does, you know, the 8 goes into the 16, right? On this one, you want to know... What will make it equal? You want it to be equal to the first term exactly. Now, we don't care about the second or third term. We're only looking at the first term. So I'm looking at this x and this 2x squared. And I ask myself, what times x is 2x squared? Well, 1 times 2 is 2. That's easy. I have one x, I need another one. I need a 2x. Now here's your test. 
2x times x is 2x squared. It should look exactly the same as that first term. Here again is where polylong is different than regular division. You have to distribute the 2x to both terms. So not only do you get a 2x squared, you also get a 6x. Okay, so here's where that mysterious negative came in. Um, you weren't actually subtracting, you were multiplying by a negative one. And this is now important because that negative one affects both terms, not just the first one. So a negative times a positive is a negative 2x squared. A negative times a positive is a negative 6x. And I actually scribble that on purpose because it's really easy to forget. And if I scribble it, I know I've hit that one and fixed the sign. So again, that's just some trick that I use. So 2x squared minus 2x squared goes to zero. If you did it right, that should always happen. The first term should go away entirely. One minus six X is negative five X. Bring down the minus 15. Now we do it again. What times X is a negative five X? A negative five. Negative five times X is negative five X. Negative five times three is negative 15. Draw the line. Multiply both of them by a negative one. A negative times a negative is a positive. They both become positive. And when we add them up, they both drop out and we get a zero. When you have a remainder of zero, we say that it divided out evenly. But what does that actually mean? What it means is x plus three is a factor of 2x squared plus x minus 15. So at this point, if the question was, is it a factor? Your answer would be yes, it is a factor. I got a remainder of zero, that means it's a factor. Okay, so what if the question doesn't say, is it a factor? It says, factor completely. Okay, in that case, you are going to write your answer in factored form. So your divisor is what you divided out, so x plus 3, and your answer is how many times it divided out, which is 2x minus 5. Neither one of those factor anymore, so that would be your factored completely form, and you'd stop there. Example 3. What if it says solve? Okay, if it says solve, you're gonna divide out using long division, write it in factored form, and then you're gonna set factored form equal to zero. And you already did this, we already learned how to do this. Zero product property means we set x plus three equal to zero, and 2x minus five equal to zero and we solve. And I'm just gonna put dot, dot, dot because this is a previous scale. So x is negative three, x is five halves. And then of course, if you're gonna list more than one solution, you use a uh, roster notation. So x is an element of the set containing negative three and five halves. So those are pretty much the three questions they're going to give you. Is it a factor, factor completely, or factor to solve? Okay, so that one was a pretty normal one. Let's do a weirder one. All right, this is example four. And we're going to do x plus three divided out of x cubed plus 6x plus 9. So if you were going to divide this one as is, you're going to run into a problem halfway through, which is that you're going to have an x squared term, and that's not an x squared. So then you're going to be cramming it in there and dropping negatives and stuff. So you want to look at the function, and you want to fill with missing 
zero x terms. So in this case, we are missing an x squared, so we need to make this a zero x squared. The outside, believe it or not, does not, you can fill the outside. Some people like to fill the outside and the inside. If you don't fill the outside and it has a gap, it means you're going to bounce. And I'll show you, uh, the last one I'm gonna show you is a bouncer, so you'll know what those look like. Okay, so x cubed plus zero x squared plus six x plus nine. Okay, so we ask ourselves the question, what times x is x cubed? It's an x squared. Again, you gotta distribute x squared times x is x cubed, x squared times three is a positive three x squared. And that's why you fill, because it gives you a place to put that x squared term so it doesn't get all mashed up. Okay, so now we multiply by a negative one. Negative times a positive is a negative, so both of them become negative. And then add them up. X cubed minus X cubed goes away. Zero minus three is negative three X squared. Bring down the other two terms. That's also a little bit different than regular division. We bring down all the terms. Okay, I want you to use a pencil. I want you to, to figure out what number should be the next term. What times X is negative three X squared? Just do it, I'll go in a second. Hey, if you picked a negative three X, you are right. Negative three X times X is negative three X squared. Negative three X times three is negative nine X. We don't actually care if the second term adds up to zero. You're really only focused on the first term. Okay, now we multiply by negative one. Negative times a negative is a positive for both of them. Three minus three goes to zero. Nine plus six is 15 X. Bring down the plus nine. You ask yourself, what times x is a 15x? 15. 15 times x is 15x. 15, 15 times 3 is 45. Multiply by negative 1. Positive times a negative is a negative. Add them up. 9 minus 45 is negative 36. So we have a remainder, which means x plus 3 is not a factor. If that was all they wanted to know, you would be done. Okay, so how do we write an answer that has a remainder? We use that fraction form that I showed you. So your answer is your quotient, x squared minus 3x plus 15, plus, and be sure you put that plus in there, our remainder, which is negative 36, over our divisor, which is x plus three. The reason I want you to put the plus in here is eventually your remainders will have more than one term. They will have an x in it. It won't just be a number. And, you, and if you put the negative in front of the fraction, it makes the remainder incorrect. All right, that is your answer. Okay, last one, I'm gonna show you one that bounces. All right, so this is example five. And we're gonna do x squared plus four being divided out of x to the fifth plus three x cubed minus four x. And then we're going to factor to solve. Okay, what I usually tell people is you can tell from the, that the uh, divisor skipped an X. You can fill that with the zero X and it's perfectly fine. Most people though only fill the function with the zero X's and then if they don't need them, they just cross them off as they go. That usually works pretty well. So I'm gonna put the X squared plus four on the outside and then I have an X to the fifth. 
I need to fill with a zero x to the fourth. Then I have a three x cubed. I need to fill with a zero x squared. I have a minus four x. And if it doesn't have a number term, put a plus zero at the end. That will make more sense later. But right now, just get into that habit of putting the zero at the end if it doesn't have a number. All right, so here we go. What times x squared is x to the fifth? I need an x cubed. Remember, keep the base, add the exponents. So x cubed times x squared is x to the fifth. Now here it's going to bounce because x cubed times 4 is not an x to the fourth. I'm going to put the plus 4x cubed under the other x cubed number. And I'm just going to cross off the zero term because I didn't need it. You don't usually know what you're going to need until you're in the middle of the problem. Okay, multiply by a negative 1. That makes both terms negative. And add them up. x to the fifth minus x to the fifth is 0. 3 minus 4 is negative x cubed. Bring down the rest. Plus 0x squared minus 4x plus 0. And we do it again. What times x squared is a negative x cubed? Well, we need a negative, and I need another x, so negative x. Negative x times x squared is negative x cubed. Negative x times 4 is a negative 4x. It bounced again. So I'm going to put the negative 4x under the other x term, and I'm just going to cross off the unneeded filler. Okay, multiply by a negative one. Negative times a negative is a positive. They both become positive. X cubed minus X cubed is zero. Four X minus four X is zero. We get a zero. Now, if they're telling you to factor to solve, you have to get a zero for a remainder. Otherwise, it's not a factor. So if they tell you to factor to solve, it must be factorable. So let's write what we've got. We divided out an X squared plus four. And what we got left was an x cubed minus x. So what you're going to need to do now is finish factoring. Now that you've done the heavy lifting with polynomial long division, now you can use your factor patterns. OK, so I can take an x out of the second one. So I'm going to put the x in the front. That gives me x squared minus 1. x squared plus 4 has a plus in it. That's not a squared minus b squared pattern. This one is. x squared minus 1 factors into x plus 1 times x minus 1. And now I have factored as much as I can possibly go. So don't forget your a squared minus b squared pattern that you learned, which is a plus b, a minus b. I have a question. Yeah. Why do you uh, factor out the x of the first because there's not an x on both terms. See this one had x's on both terms? Good question. OK, so we're going to solve. So each of these is equal to 0. Zero product property. We now take every factor and set it equal to 0. OK, let's do the easy one first. x equals 0. There's our first factor. Now we'll do the other two easy ones, which is the right two. This one, you subtract 1, and you get x is negative 1. This one, you add 1, and you get x equals 1. Now, this middle one is why we couldn't do this problem until now, because you did not know how to handle, when you subtract 4, x squared equals negative 4. You just didn't have the math to do that. Now you do. Um, since there's an x squared, you're going to take a square root of both sides. Two x's, one comes out. I get a positive x and a negative x. Now that is a negative 4. So it's going to end up being 2i, because 2 times 2 is 4, and the negative 1 becomes an i. So on the second one, you multiply or divide by a negative 1, and you get x equals negative 2i. So you have a positive 2i and a negative 2i. So that's the new stuff. OK, so let's do our answer. x is an element of the set containing 0 plus and minus 2i 
minus one, positive one, close the set. So if you were to graph this baby, it would have zeros at zero, negative one, and one. The two i is imaginary, it wouldn't show up on the graph. It is a root, it's just not a zero. Okay, that is the end of the notes.